Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kendra. I'm a veterinarian here at the Houston Zoo. Um, we're going to be doing an exam on a sea turtle today. That's, we're actually preparing for surgery that's happening today. Um, so I help run the sea turtle rehabilitation program and um, let's go ahead and tell you a little bit about the sea turtle that we're going to be seeing today. Um, her name is Merida. We actually don't know if she's male or female, but I'm going to call her female just for, for ease. Um, and this animal came in in um, at Christmas time as a cold stunned animal. That means that she found herself in too cold of waters, wasn't able to handle that, and was just um, very debilitated, um, was rescued by the stranding team at um, Texas A&M Galveston's Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Rescue, uh, sorry, Sea Turtle Research. And um, they brought her in. Um, she was examined by veterinarians at the Houston Zoo. Um, noticed that she had, we couldn't even tell if she had eyes. Um, looked like they'd been pecked by uh, by seabirds, and uh, but got her on some medications. Um, she also had bone infection from frostbite, got her on medication for those, and just gradually started rehabilitating her. Um, as we moved along, um, we worked with an ophthalmologist who said, yep, there's eyes back there, but they're shriveled and they probably will never work again. But with medication, treating some fungal infections on those eyes, the eyes actually regrew. Um, it looks like she can see again. This is not something mammals can do, but man, these turtles are amazing. Um, and she's healed from those eye infections. She's healing from the frostbite. You're going to see her shell is not quite as pretty as some of the other turtles you might see out in the wild because it's still healing, and, but doing great. Um, but today, we're going to be taking off some tumors called fibropapilloma tumors. This is a really really, really common problem in green sea turtles, of which she is a green sea turtle. Um, doesn't always cause a problem. They, they grow and they um, regress um, by themselves, but if they're in areas or they're too big and they're causing problems, we do have to take them off before we can release these animals. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I'm going to have it, go ahead and have our friend Patty from uh, Texas A&M Galveston Gold Center for Sea Turtle Research. Go ahead and grab her out of this tub um, while our technician Katie gets some blood on her. So we want to recheck how she's doing and uh, make sure that um, after she heals from the surgery that blood work shows that she's okay to be released. And then um, after she does that, she's going to give her some anesthetic medication to, to get her to go to sleep. Um, she's a very feisty turtle. She feels a lot, lot better um, than she did when she first came in. Um, and you can already see those fibropapilloma tumors, all of those little uh, multicolored um, things that are kind of popping up are, are some of the things that we're going to remove. The, the largest ones aren't quite visible yet. They're actually under her shell um, in the back. So uh, we'll be taking a look at her and making sure that we get all of the ones that are causing her any issues. Um, so as I said, she has really recovered from the cold stun already. She is just doing great. Um, very, very feisty turtle. She's in good body condition. Um, Katie's going to be uh, trying to get blood from, uh, it's essentially the jugular vein, um, also called a cervical sinus in these species, uh, um, and collecting some blood, making sure that we have um, really good uh, evidence that this animal's healthy before she gets released after surgery. Um, now, I mentioned that these tumors, uh, they can come and go. They're actually caused by a virus, um, and um, that's pretty much present in all of, all of the green sea turtles in the world, or at least quite a lot of them, and we usually only remove them if they are causing a problem. She actually had some on her third eyelids um, that were previously removed with uh, one of our consulting ophthalmologists, so um, we're going to check those out today, make sure they're healing well also. Um, so lots of things that we're going to be doing to make sure that she's doing Okay. All right, so some more things about this turtle. Um, as I mentioned, she is a green sea turtle. Um, there are several species of turtles that we see stranded along the t upper Texas coast. Most commonly, we see the green sea turtles. We see Kemp's uh, Ridley sea turtles that are the most endangered species, and we also see loggerheads commonly. Occasionally, we'll see a hawksbill turtle. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Texas A&M Galveston Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Research runs the stranding program. They also um, take care of a portion of the turtles um, in rehabilitation that are that are brought in for brought in for rehab, um, and then others are taken care of by Houston Zoo sea, sea Turtle Keepers. And then the Houston Zoo provides the veterinary care for all of the sea turtles that are brought in on the t Upper Texas coast. All right, it looks like we're getting a really great blood sample on this animal um, to help check, see how it's doing. And once Katie gets that collected, um, that'll go off to the lab and we'll find out some more information about her health, make sure she's not anemic. Um, anemia is a really common problem in our 
uh, stranded turtles that are cold stunned um, with their red blood cells that are too low, make sure there's no signs of infection. Um, you can see on her shell that she has some, it's not quite as pretty. There's some of those tan areas where her shell is actually growing back in where um, she lost dead bone that was uh, affected by frostbite from that cold stun event. Um, so not the most beautiful turtle in the world, but she will be, um, she will be really beautiful when all of that shell grows back. And um, we're really excited that she's, was an animal we weren't sure was gonna be releasable and is going to be releasable uh, once she heals from this surgery. Um, we are in a sea turtle saving summer, and this is plastic free July. So some things you can do uh, to help save sea turtles in the wild is to, to really reduce your use of single use plastics. Um, this is really important to, because a lot of single use plastics you know, unintentionally end up on the beach and they might be ingested by a sea turtle or they might become entangled um, in a plastic. And um, to help prevent that, just you know, maybe get a reusable water bottle or um, a reusable bag that you uh, use at the grocery store. Um, just some little things that you can do uh, to help save sea turtles in the wild. Um, if you've been out to the zoo recently to our amazing Galapagos, um, uh, Galapagos exhibit, you might have met uh, or seen Bobby the sea turtle. Bobby the sea turtle is the same species as um, as this animal right here. They're both green sea turtles. Bobby was not releasable. She has some, some buoyancy issues, so we were worried that she wouldn't be able to survive in the wild um, and uh, wouldn't be able to uh, necessarily avoid boat strikes, avoid predators, but she does really, really, really well in the zoo and is a great animal to have in our one ocean exhibit in the Galapagos. Um, and there's um, if you haven't been out to the Houston Zoo, please do come out, come to our new Galapagos exhibit. Um, in addition to um, seeing Bobby, you can see all of the other amazing animals and learn more ways that you can help um, save sea turtles in the wild. All right, so um, what Katie's doing is just administering um, the rest of the anesthetic medications. Um, and we're gonna give one more injection into this animal's muscle. Um, this is both anesthetic and also helps with pain meds. You know, we're gonna be taking off some of these tumors, that hurts, but um, we get pain meds in advance um, so that they don't feel that pain and that they um, have that pain med on board also as during recovery. Um, and then right after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put her down and let her kind of calm down a little bit as those pain meds and those anesthetic meds kick in and just uh, let, her, let her be a little bit. Though I think she's actually getting, getting sleepy as you're holding her. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get some gloves on and take a peek at this animal and make sure that we are seeing everything we wanna see in terms of healing from all of her other problems. Do you wanna just hold her right what, as you're doing? So I mentioned we actually, um, one of our consulting ophthalmologists already took off some tumors that were on her third eyelid. So this is her main eyelid and the little, um, little membrane that comes up over her eyelid is the third eyelid, also called the nictitating membranes. Nictitating membranes. So they were able to get quite a lot of that tissue off um, without hurting the eye itself. And it's looking really great. So she's healing really well. If that gets too big, it prevents them from being able to blink appropriately. Um, so it's really important that those get taken off uh, before an animal's released. So her eyes look good, and I don't see any evidence of uh, regrowth of those tumors there. So I'm just gonna take a peek at the rest of her. I kind of see what we're in for for this surgery. Um, so as you can see, these are all these little tumors. Um, we won't be able to get all of them, and we know that it's a virus, so it can come back, but we just make sure that we're setting her up for as much success as possible in the wild. So we're getting off any of the ones that are preventing her flippers from being able to move appropriately, her being able to get around. All right, taking a look at her shell. So as I mentioned, some of these kind of tan spots are areas of dead bone that um, is actually gonna regrow um, and is looking really good. So when I feel it, I feel for soft spots. Um, because that's indicating that the bone is not as healthy as I necessarily want it to be, uh, but everything's feeling really firm and really good. 
Um, some of the worst of her tumors are actually around the back. They look pretty gnarly and are actually bleeding a little bit. So those are some of the ones that are most important for us to get off. So I'm just taking a look at those and seeing what we kind of planning the surgery coming up here. I'm going to sneak around the other side of this animal. Yeah, the most important ones are these kind of bigger ones that we're going to go ahead and take off. The next thing that we're going to do, I'm not sure if we'll be doing it on camera or if we'll be gone by then, but um, is we're going to put a, a endotracheal tube into her airway um, so that during surgery she's going to get some additional anesthetic gas uh, to help keep her asleep, but also that we can give her breaths and make sure that we're protecting her airway during the entire surgery. Um, so that's kind of um, what we're going to do as she falls asleep a little bit more. And we're going to be using the Doppler to monitor her heart rate. Um, so just making sure that she's nice and stable throughout the entire surgery. Yeah, I think we're ready to intubate. Um, maybe Patty, if you can help move her a little bit to the edge of the table here or wherever Katie needs her. So there's a question about how the tumors develop and how big they can get. Um, so as I said, there are a virus. Um, this is a virus that is contagious between turtles, so it's passed from turtle to turtle. We don't know exactly um, the method of transmission, but it's just a virus and um, it can cause the tumors to grow or regress. It's sort of like cold sores in people. Sometimes when they get a little bit stressed, people get a little bit stressed out, a cold sore will flare up. It's, it's actually very similar to how that works. Um, so they can get extremely large. Um, some of the ones you're seeing up front are not even as big as the ones that she has kind of under the flippers in the back. Um, basically, as, as, big as, as big as you can imagine is how big that they can get. Um, it looks like she's not quite asleep enough for her to get a um, tube in her airway yet, so we're just going to give her a little bit more time and let her fall asleep a little bit more. But she's pretty sleepy, um, so it should just be a few more minutes. Um, if you are um, out on the beach in Galveston or um, anywhere along the upper Texas coast and you do see a sea turtle that you think might be in distress or maybe you're fishing and you accidentally catch a sea turtle on hook and line, um, please do know that there's a number you can call. It's 1-866-TURTLE-5. That number will, um, you'll get routed to the right people based on where you are um, and that animal will be uh, picked up by volunteers, taken into rehabilitation, and we will make sure that, you know, if there's a hook, we get any hooks out, clear up any wounds, um, help that turtle out and get it to where um, it can hopefully be released again. Uh, so there's an amazing network of people that, that helps make all of that happen. And there are signs along the beach in a lot of places, but if you don't see one, um, that number is 1-866-TURTLE-5. Um, and if it's along the upper Texas coast from the Matagorda Bay to the Louisiana border, uh, the veterinarians that are going to be taking care of it are the veterinarians here at the Houston Zoo. Um, a lot of the common issues that we see in sea turtles, especially the ones coming into rehabilitation, are the cold stun sea turtles. Um, obviously, there's a season for that. So when we have a dramatic change in water temperature um, and turtles find themselves in the bay when they're not quite, not quite uh, ready for that t temperature change, then, uh, then they get cold stunned. We have to warm them back up gradually and make sure that they're, they're okay to be released again and treat any secondary problems that come with that problems that are common include frostbite, pneumonia, and um, obviously we see these fibrocapilloma tubers as well. Um, so those are kind of the common things with that. We often, another common problem we see is, is, is just incidental hook and line. So somebody accidentally caught a turtle um, on, on a hook when they were fishing. So we have to take out those hooks. Um, sometimes they're caught in a flipper, sometimes they're caught in their mouth. Take out those hooks, heal up any wounds. That's another pretty common problem. Unfortunately, another problem associated with humans is we see entanglements. So we have one turtle in rehabilitation right now that um, had fishing line just wrapped, 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 wrapped around the flipper. We thought we were going to have to amputate. It looks like we're going to be able to save that flipper. It's still healing right now. So um, that's another common problem that we see. And then sometimes we just see animals that are sick and debilitated and um, have gotten themselves in a situation where they haven't been able to eat enough. 
and are, just come in really th thin and emaciated and weak. And we just um, give them a lot of groceries and we um, feed them back and treat any secondary infections that they might have and um, get them back in the ocean if we can. Um, so those are kind of the most common problems that we see in rehabilitation, um, which is where we see, where we see our turtles um, coming through. Um, so this is a, a question about how old this turtle is. So this turtle um, is a juvenile green sea turtle. They get much, much, much bigger than this. Um, they can be like 300 to 350 pounds. Um, she only weighs about 25 pounds. And it, the, um, we're estimating maybe she's around five to seven years old. That is just a guess. Uh, but um, she, she is a juvenile, so she will get much, much, much bigger when, when she gets out in the ocean and gets, um, um, gets all of her nutrition from the ocean when she gets back out there. They, they grow, grow slowly over a long period of time. All right, it looks like we're about, um, got this animal's airway tube in, she's intubated, we're gonna get that um, secured and then we're gonna keep getting her ready for surgery. We thank you all for joining us. Um, again, if you, uh, just by coming to the Houston Zoo, you're helping to save animals in the wild. And um, please, if you can participate in Sea Turtle Saving Summer and Plastic Free July by reducing your single use plastics to help save sea turtles in the wild. Thank you very much. And I hope you come out and visit us at the Houston Zoo.